Hey everybody, today is January 24th, not 25th. Uh, welcome to the KCP community meeting. We uh, have an agenda issue in GitHub that I'll paste in chat. If you are interested in adding anything to today's discussion, please feel free. And I see that we do have some discussions that were deferred from the last meeting. So, um, Nolan, do you want to maybe recap uh, what those were? Yeah, so um, Mike had a question about uh, implementing logical clusters upstream. Uh, I know there's been discussion of implementing some pieces of KCP upstream that weren't really accepted. Um, but the question was, if we could get the logical cluster support itself implemented upstream, would that be enough for KCP? to maybe um, not have a fork. Uh, and then Dan was asking about well, let's, let's do one, one at a time. OK. Yeah. Go ahead, Stefan. Yeah, so the answer is probably mostly. So a yes. But of course, logic clusters is a big ask, right? It's not only that we get something into the storage layer, it's, it also means that we have to touch every second controller, at least the generic ones. So it's a pretty big ask to get that upstream. And there's more. Um, uh, we also have changes to the custom resource handling that maybe we could make some changes that'd be palatable. But um, I, I think it is evolving into a non-goal to try and get all this code upstream. Like we can work yeah. with the fork just fine. Uh, also, if we so, get if we if we get hooks to to add logic clusters, like to change storage paths, this is not enough. So even then, you have to change controllers. So yeah. Yes. So uh, the question part of the question here is, can we factor the KCP work? Uh, you know, if we only get the upstream to adopt the logical clusters, not workspaces, not API export and binding, and everything else, just the logical clusters. Uh, yes, that does involve some change in clients, um, although I haven't really considered how smooth and easy we could make that path. Um, you know, I, I think if that might be worth discussing. I think if we could make, obviously, uh, any kind of change upstream has to be incremental. Um, so if we could come up with an actual incremental path that gets to logical clusters, and I know it has been discussed upstream before and rejected, but uh, the, the idea here is, um, although they reject it, um, other people keep wanting it. Um, you know, and last week I came with a list of four projects or use cases, uh, TMC, uh, Edge MC, uh, Fabric, and Crossplane that all would benefit from, you know, what they call upstream uh, super namespaces. Um, so you know, I think we could conceivably go back and try again to say, you know, you didn't like it before, but now that there's more growing uses, you know, maybe we can actually, uh, you know, get some buy-in. Um, so the, pr the question and proposal is, you know, could we go with a proposal to get to, to just to upstream super namespaces or logical clusters? And, you know, can we, can we come up with a plan for incremental, uh, making that move incremental? Um, and if so, you know, would that make it so that KCP did not need to maintain a fork? Uh, the, the what KCP needed could be done uh, externally to the Kubernetes tree, if only it had the super namespaces or logical clusters. I don't think so. I also don't have concerns maintaining a fork. Like that's not a problem. So we anticipate that clients, people writing code against KCP with multiple uh, like multiple workspace aware controllers should not have to use our fork of Kubernetes to do that. And that's basically the, the target that we're aiming at. I'm not sure I understood that comment. Did, I sounded like you said call it controllers, multiple workspace aware controllers will not have to use the KCP fork of Kubernetes? Correct. That what is about the, the KCP fork of client Go? Yes, that would be required. But it would only work against the 
KCP fork of Kubernetes. But it's not a no. fork, it's a regeneration of clients. Yeah, it's regenerating clients. So you will be able to write a controller that can talk to a normal Kubernetes that has one and only one cluster, or you can take that same controller and point it at KCP, and it will work against multiple workspaces. Multiple workspaces. Um, like that, that's our goal, is that the development experience is standard Kubernetes controller development, plus a little bit of if KCP, do the KCP thing. Um, it the, the if is a development time if or a runtime if? It's runtime. Um, and uh, by working against multiple workspaces, what does that, I mean, in, in, you mean work in a workspace oblivious way so that the controller in some sense isn't aware of workspaces? No, it would it would need to be coded to work against multiple workspaces if that is present, like if it's talking to KCP. We have examples of this today. All so, right. So Andy, just to understand, so you are saying that I'll be able to have a client that is workspace aware. If there is a KCP, it can work with multiple workspaces, but this exact same client controller will be able to work against the regular Kubernetes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so to su let me see if I can summarize the answer to my question. Um, so uh, I guess the, the the real motivation was I was trying to get rid of the fork. And the, what I'm hearing is you don't feel a need to get rid of the fork. And um, I guess that's that's the main answer. Uh, I'll, in, I'll say one thing and then over to you, Stefan. I would love to not have a fork. I don't think it's realistic that we won't, that we can get rid of the fork. Go ahead, Stefan. Yeah, so the answers we got were pretty dogmatic and we don't expect space for logical clusters. If the adoption changes, and that's what you described basically, that's starting to change because there are more parties, right? Crossplane and Edge and so on. Maybe this has in, uh, impact on the decision, the feedback we get, but the one we got is not. Right, I know that that was, like that. I know that there was, there was negative feedback. My question was, you know, as you say, there's increasing demonstration that, that there are use cases for super namespaces, as they call them. Um, so my question was, you know, twofold, you know, in part, if we got the super namespaces part adopted upstream and only that much, would that enable getting rid of the fork? No. Okay. Um, so we need more books like that. If upstream was, was open to those, and it's a maybe, maybe even a probably, but still, it's we are far from that. And we are still interested in writing the cap to propose a generic control plane library that over time, both the Cube API server as we know it today and KCP could use this hypothetical generic control plane library. And if it's developed in such a way that it does enable logical clusters, but Cube API server doesn't take advantage of that enablement, that would allow us to have them. Uh, and I think everybody could ultimately be happy, but it's still not sufficient to uh, get rid of the fork, at least in our, um, our vision or what we expect. So we will do that. It'll take a while. We'll see what happens. But it, getting back to the summary of, of my take, the fork is not a problem. Trying to get rid of the fork in any short-term time frame is not realistic. And we have other things that are more important in the shorter term than trying to get rid of the fork because it's not a problem. 
Yeah, I wasn't necessarily going short term. Uh, I'm more focused on the long term. Um, and I think we already know that if we propose that the upstream maintain a generic control plane that can do super namespaces, um, you know, that's that's the same as selling super namespaces. I mean, um, you know, the, currently, you know, we've already asked, you know, about super namespaces, right? And the answer was they don't see enough of use cases to justify the maintenance cost. And they really don't want to take on anything, any maintenance cost that doesn't benefit the Kubernetes project. So we really have to, if we want super namespaces, even in a generic control plane library, we have to really, you know, make the case that there are enough compelling use cases. Yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, Ezra, you've had your hand up. Hey, just a related question. What is the policy you plan to do in terms of uh, rebasing the upstream or, uh, you know, updating to version? Yep. Is it uh, your we're, we're goal is start... like maintaining two versions uh, behind yep. or what? We're going to start the 126 rebase this week or next week. Oh, okay. And, and looking forward, you anticipate that that will be kind of a regular kind of a yeah. process, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, Mike, anything else? No, I think I got my answer. Thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, Nolan, the next bullet here about uh, CRDD. Yeah, Dan was asking about this. I saw in Slack he wasn't able to attend. Um, Ezra, you had talked about your um, your branch. I don't know how much more there is to say. I don't. Steve on the call. Uh, I, I I also think that uh, with Stefan, answer, I think there is a kind of Slack thread where we kind of finalized the discussion. Right, Stefan, do you want? Anything we know want to add? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's a similar discussion uh, like the previous one. So it's about a fork, and the fork should be kind of small to enable things like rebase. And for the moment, we, I mean, our target is basically to follow kind, like have something external, at least prototype that. It's more universal and can be developed independently. It gives us mostly of what the Intuit solution would give. Of course, if you want to go um, in the direction of I know custom secondary indexes or those these kind of things or no what no watch cache, um, we need entry, but entry is heavy and probably at the moment not the priority. And we need more buy-in upstream for that, I think. So can I put a little finer point on that? Um, it, have we asked or what do we think of the possibility? of proposing upstream a uh, refactoring of the API server code so that there is, uh, it, you know, today there is this interface, uh, internal interface um, that Steve took advantage of, will refactor to really expose this internal interface that looks like says there's a key value store and we're just gonna use a key value store. And he just had have two implementations of the key value store interface. Um, you know, what about the idea of a an, another refactoring that goes higher in the stack in the API server? Um, and, you know, this this interface includes stuff like the functionality of the watch cache and indexing and so on, so that we could have a couple of implementations, one in tree and one out of tree. Okay, so we don't have to sell additional maintenance or testing upstream, um, but we can maintain, you know, uh, something that that works without alternate code it's 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 um without a big you know w without any more alternate than necessary right maintain our own implementation of this higher level internal interface for for storage i think every here would love that but probably we are not the right group to be convinced i mean i think uh we sh whoever's is, interested is Steve here is steve here no no um i think whoever's interested should discuss and create a either an issue or a cap whichever and submit it and then go to the api machinery sig meeting 
and discuss it. And that'll be step one. Thank you. OK. Um, is it all right to move on to the next topic? OK. So Andy, uh, you are asking about Slack channels? Yeah, we, do, we don't want to pollute the forum KCP with RPR discussions and approval requests and stuff like that. So we were thinking maybe since the the regularity of that type of thing is increasing on our end, we're doing it more or less in a vacuum in our private Slack channel. And I hesitate to put all that information into form KCP because it would be, I think, a bit distracting. So thought maybe asking and approaching the assembled community here and see if there's appetite for us to have our own Slack channel that we could dedicate to just these types of activities. Uh, I think that's fine. Um, I, I, I will note you are mentioning internal Slack channels. If you're looking for public stuff in the Kubernetes Slack, maybe create a KCP Edge dev channel. That makes sense to me. OK. And Stefan says plus one. Um, I can't remember in the cube Slack if you have to request a channel or if you can just create one. Probably have no, there's, to there's an issue system, I think. Yeah, because they manage them in, in Git. So uh, yeah, I would say I think that's self-service. Andy, if you need help finding it, let us know. Um, otherwise, we'll just assume that you're on your way there. Thank you for the support. Sure. Uh, next up, you've got an issue getting one of our tools installed. Uh, yeah, I yeah. So we'll, we did this. Look. Yeah, we did this through the make file, and then we did it separately on command line, and and neither one of them seems to be working properly. So yeah, if you, if anybody could take a look at that, we'd appreciate it. No, I, I think I can explain the issue here, and it gets to more refactoring. Uh, so the problem is uh, to use API exports and bindings. We need to use this tool, um, API Gen, to generate the API export and API resource schema objects. And uh, so, if some other project, you know, such as Edge MC or some other code repo, um, you know, wants to use Go install, you know, you would think you could use Go install, but there are some technical requirements in Go install, and uh, you know, it, it boils down more or less to. Uh, the go.mod, the thing you're go installing, can't do any replace directives. Um, that's bad news because um, the go.mod in KCP has lots of replace directives. So we, we can't do go install of uh, API gen. Um, and we can't even do it um, you know, either kind of like an independent tool or in the context of the Edge MC's go.mod. Even then, we can't do a go install of API gen. Um, I think that based on the way Go works, um, you know, I see only a, a few uh, kind of crummy options. One is uh, Edge MC could make a copy of the API gen code and just use its own local copy. That's a really crummy option. Um, another one is the, the make file could do a git clone of KCP and build the API gen tool and use that. That's not quite as bad. It's still pretty crummy. Um, with some refactoring, um, it might be possible to have an API gen that can be Go installed uh, because it does not have uh, replace directors. But that requires some level of refactoring. Go ahead, Stefan. Yeah, I think we are pretty open for any solutions there. So another Go mod, if this does it, go for it. Like the API repository is the same thing. I was going to propose another solution, which is to make it part of the cube control plugin. Yeah, I think it's more. I think it's not. There are some technical things inside dependencies, like exceptions. Well, I was it's just awesome. reviewing. I was just looking at the code. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just one name file, um, and in terms of imports, you know, the bad news is it does import from KCP dev which I think means that in order to build its go.mod, we'll have to have a replace directive. No, it only imports the APIs module. Yeah, right, but that still cool. means a replace directive. That, right, that, has, an, that has its own go mod. 
right, but that still means that the Go mod for API gen has a replace directive to point to the local copy of the APIs. Yeah. How, how about we'll <laughs> we'll fix this in some way that works for you? I don't know that we need to debate it here. And in general, uh, in, in, any what you said, I mean, any kind of refactoring which makes this more generic and usable, I think we are open. Yeah. Just somebody has to do it. Right. I so my guess, my estimation right now, based on my understanding, is that the refactoring that will have to be done be break out the APIs to a separate repo, break out API gen, um, and then uh, that yes. that's the refactoring. I don't think the APIs must be moved out. There's an extra go mod. There's no replace. I. Okay, so yeah, we don't have to do all the debugging right here. So right, yeah. the point is, yeah, yeah. If you know, if there's a commitment to make it work sometime soon, that's good enough. Thank you. Sure thing. Uh, and then we got a new one from Lionel. Uh, I'll let you describe it. Uh, yes. So um, so here is a use case I'm working on uh, currently, right? Uh, so I, it's an instance of a general use case. Uh, I apply this to a Kafka. Uh, so uh, as a service provider, I have a bunch of uh, Kafka API that I want to uh, export to my uh, customers. And when my customer, they bind to my uh, API or service, uh, I want to generate uh, automatically a secret for them, right? So that they can uh, access the, uh, the Kafka cluster. That's the first basic use case. And then uh, another variation of this use case is uh, I want to create first a topic and then give access to this uh, topic. And this topic, I can either create it uh, on, the, uh, the, on the service provider side uh, or on the uh, customer side. This uh, I don't know yet uh, for now. But the point here is that uh, uh, we need uh, some mechanism to be able to create some objects either on the service provider side uh, workspace uh, or and also on the uh, customer cus um, consumer uh, workspace. Sorry. Uh, so I chatted a bit with uh, Stefan. So I understand the permission claim uh, now. I think so, which is about permission. So that that's that's good. That helps. Um, so I guess the question is um, uh, how. Can I go about like solving this problem in KCP? I mean, I guess the first question is: Is it a valid use case for KCP? And then, uh, then how we to, get to that? To have it generate, like to create a secret uh, when the binding is set up. Yeah. You know, Lionel, I wonder if you're really noticing that you, this is an example of the general idea of a little more. Uh, general concept of you know creating a service instance, um, and I wonder if this is something we should ask to be done kind of at the user level rather than in the mechanism, right? Could you design it so that that you have an explicit object that says this is a service object an instance that the client creates, and you have a controller that reacts to that service instance object by making secrets and, and in general you know whatever else is needed, right? So that there's less demand on the mechanism. Yeah, but I don't want the client to do that, right? I want uh, I want something that you know from a user perspective. The only thing I want to do is uh, a consumer perspective is just bind to a service, and that's it. Right? Well, else, my, my point from me. Okay, so my general. I, I, I think he wants is, some hold on, guys. Hold on, Stefan's got his hand up. Go ahead, Stefan. Yeah, so it's a valid use case. Uh, internally, we had also consumer uh, service providers who wanted that. This is not something, and I think this is what Mike said, it's not something we have to build into the mechanism, like into the core APIs. Um, this can be built as another controller plus CID API or API in general mechanism. So a service provider will create an object describing a life cycle of certain objects. Permission claims make sure that the controller can do the work and this could be built just as an add-on on KCP. Um, go ahead, yeah. Frederick. Sorry, Andy. No, um, I just yeah, uh, that, that we, I, right. OK, sorry. Go ahead. So, sorry, I, I just want to say that uh, I, I did something similar for uh, 
the, the pipeline service, basically uh, watching an API binding and then creating a, a couple of uh, resources when uh, uh, the, the service gets on. So if you want, I can share the, the code with you. So it's not very actual. Uh, I haven't uh, updated for a, a few months now, but uh, can give you an idea maybe. Okay, yes, that's, that would be useful. The thing I'm, I'm, I mean, one thing I would try to avoid is having the service provider or requiring the service provider to uh, write a controller, right? If we find a, another mechanism that is simpler, that would be great. How, like, the contents of the secret are unique to the service provider, though, right? Yes, yes. But maybe like it's something similar to uh, the concept of a meta controller or webhook, also something like that, right? So you provide like uh, some sort of uh, ways for an easy way to create these objects. Okay, but you you, you can do that, like an API for service providers, maybe via um, not mature service accounts help here. But we don't want the service provider to write something. It must be generic. And I think it can be done. There is an old PR from Steve, so we just have to find it. I think it was very near. Yeah, I can I can take a look at all these, right? And uh, prior work. And obviously, this is only for currently, I'm describing only the creation part of it, but it's the whole uh, you know, life cycle management of these secrets and these subjects. What happened when the service provider you know, a great version, this kind of thing, right? But that's uh, that's for later on. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Frederic. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to say that uh, uh, you could use also something uh, like, like Cube Builder to uh, generate uh, if, if this code, and uh, so that it's easy to, to use uh, for uh, any service provider. Yeah, but again, yeah. I'm not 100% sure because this is skills that you need to learn. Uh, so yeah, but why not? Yeah, I, I understand this. Kind of, how can this? We can make this work using this kind of technology. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Mike or Ezra, did y'all have follow-ups? Um, I just wanted to say it sounds like what was what you know. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so the, the basic answer I hear, think I'm hearing is the service provider can write a controller um, and use the API binding as a service instance and 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 create whatever is needed is additionally. Yeah, that is definitely one way to go about this. Using the initializer, right? Uh, no, you just you just write a regular controller and you'll be able to see all the API balance. API bindings that are bound to your API export. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't have something special to this. I think it's in because I encountered that on completely different question, not related to initializer or service at all. I think it's a general trade-off we have here where we you have a framework, and on the other hand, the controllers require us to have some, you know, real cluster running workload cluster running something, and we try to see whether we can push more and more stuff into the framework and put some hooks in the framework that will allow us to do stuff right. And obviously, on the other hand, you want to maintain the framework as, you know, the base is lean. And so that's, I think, a general um, kind of trade off that we. It's delicate, but uh, so it, it looked like we had a link uh, that Frederic posted. Is this the example that uh, you were talking about? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, uh, so final check this out and. Uh, I'd say if you have questions, reach out to Frederic. And if you want to have further discussions, um, we're always on Slack, and we can uh, we can talk about this next week if you need to as well. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, here we are. So that was the last one in here. Before I go on to issue triage, does anybody have any last minute topics? All right. 
Uh, I'm going to find it. Hold on. KCP projects. KCP. And here we go. Uh, all right. So the first one is asking if we can add a flag that's like dash n or dash dash namespace to be able to switch workspaces on the fly using cube control. Um, I don't foresee this happening. I commented that we could maybe have some sort of wrapper around cube control that would support this. But um, given that we can't make changes to cube control to support logical clusters or workspaces. I think the the only options here are either to close this as we can't do it or keep it open to see if somebody wanted to try and do some sort of wrapper. Any thoughts from the community? Stefan says try a wrapper. OK, we'll keep this open then. And I will put this in the backlog. OK, um, I know that this update controllers to use the committers is in progress. Link to download latest release page is not working yet. Yeah, most of our links are having issues on the website. I think this is similar to another issue about other links having problems. Um, so I'm going to put this in next and assign it to myself. Uh, I am going to focus or put some of my time focusing on the website and the documentation and making sure that KCP is approachable to both newcomers and old timers. So um, this will be something I'll be working on. Uh, TMC related EE tests are always scheduled on the root shard. Uh, Y'all are working on this right now, or will be? What's the status? Yeah, in fact, um, this should be fixed when the work I started on enabling sharding in the sinker and then in the deployment controller. OK, so in progress or next? Then, yes, we, we well, put it to next. OK. And, you know. Thank you. Um, oh, this is the one I created that was showed up. Uh, so let me put this in next. If anybody is or has spare time and would like to investigate any flake whatsoever, I will gladly donate my time to help show my process for trying to figure out what's going on when something is flaking. So if you're interested in bug hunting or flake hunting, please reach out to me or anybody else. Um, we will give you the tools and knowledge that you need to try and figure this stuff out. Uh, and, and getting rid of these flakes helps everybody because it means that pull requests get merged faster. So um, if you have time, please reach out and let us know. Uh, yeah, I will take this one. Thank you, Nolan, for volunteering to learn <laughs> about my flake process. <laughs> Uh, this next uh, view lists a resource, but doesn't allow it to be listed. Uh, oh, I remember what this one is. OK. Uh, this one, uh, Lukash, are you working on this? Like, I, I know we have some stuff we need to do here, or is this just next or backlog? Yeah, I will work on it. So next, maybe. OK, thanks. Thanks. Uh, another flake. And we just talked about this one. Uh, I'm going to put it in next as well. If folks have time to look into, us, into this, um, that would be awesome. Uh, I do think that a simple Go mod could work. So uh, if nobody gets around to it, I may try and do it soon-ish. But uh, if you'll have time, Mike or Andy, that'd be cool too. All right, that is all of the new issues. So 
I think we have gotten to the end of today's agenda. So we'll stop early today. And if you all need anything, we're always on Slack and GitHub. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, bye. See you.